This video is kindly brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to create a beautiful online presence. Hi, my name's Janelle and welcome back to Rosary Apparel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this adorable ruffled sleeve blouse. I am just completely obsessed with ruffles at the moment and this blouse is no exception. So let's get into it and let me show you how to make a blouse like this for your own wardrobe. For this project, I'm going to be pattern hacking my Rosa sewing pattern, which I'll have a link to down in the description below. And for my blouse, I'm going to be using this beautiful Merchant and Mills cotton fabric, but any light to mid-weight fabric will be fine for this project. You'll also need to download my free statement sleeve template, which I'll have a link to down in the description below as well. And for this project, we're going to be using the sleeve one template. You'll also need the bodice front and back templates, as well as the back and front facing template pieces of the Rosa pattern. Pin the bodice front and back templates onto your fabric, making sure that the front bodice template is on the fold of your fabric. When cutting out the pieces, lengthen them by approximately 10 centimeters or four inches like this and cut the sides out straight instead of angling them as the pattern suggests. I've made a whole video on how to pattern hack the Rosa pattern to make a blouse and I'll leave that linked below if you need a more detailed explanation on how to do this. Then cut out the remaining pieces as normal. Next, you'll also need to cut out some rectangles in your fabric. If you're making some of the smaller sizes of the Rosa pattern, cut out three rectangles that are approximately 50 centimeters or 20 inches by 10 centimeters or four inches. And if you're making some of the larger sizes of the Rosa pattern, cut out three rectangles that are approximately 60 centimeters or 24 inches by 10 centimeters or four inches. You'll also need two smaller rectangles that are approximately 40 centimeters or 16 inches by three centimeters or one and a half inches. And you should now have all the pieces for your ruffled sleeve blouse cut out and ready to sew. Take the front bodice piece and mark out the bust starts onto the wrong side of the fabric with a water erasable pen or some tailor's chalk. Then stitch the darts in place, starting at the point of the dart without backstitching to the end of the dart in a kind of triangle shape. Then tie the loose threads into a double knot and press the darts towards the bottom edge of the blouse. Next, with right sides together, place the bodice back pieces onto the bodice front and stitch them together along the shoulder edge. I then like to overlock my raw edges, but you can use the zigzag stitch of your sewing machine if you don't own an overlocker. And you should now have something that looks like this. Next, take one of the bigger rectangles and fold and press it in half with wrong sides together. Open the folded rectangle up and then fold it in half with right sides together and stitch along the shorter edge like this. Fold the rectangle back right side out and give it a good press. Next, change the stitch length of your sewing machine to the longest possible setting and sew two rows of gathering stitches along the raw edge of your rectangle. Gently pull on the top two threads to gather up your rectangle until it's approximately the same size as the neck edge. Then give the gathered rectangle a good press with your iron. Next, 
Next, with right sides together, place the back facing pieces onto the front facing piece and stitch them together along the shoulder edge like this. Then overlock the raw edges and also overlock the curved edge of the facing. Fold and press the curved edge of the facing in by about one centimeter or half an inch and then stitch it in place. Then with right sides together, place the facing along the neck edge as well and then stitch all the layers in place along the neck edge like this. I then trim away the excess fabric at the neck edge. I normally would use my overlocker for this part, but the layers were getting pretty thick by this point and I didn't want to risk breaking one of my overlocker needles. And then fold the facing onto the inside of the blouse and give the now ruffled collar a good press. And now let's take a quick break to talk about the sponsor of this video. This video has been very kindly sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to create a beautiful online presence and run your business. I've personally been using Squarespace to run the Rosary Apparel website and online store for the last five or six years. And what I love about Squarespace is how quick and easy they make it to create a beautiful and professional website all by yourself. Whether you want to create a portfolio to showcase your work, start making and selling your own products, write a blog, or simply create any type of website, Squarespace has so many beautifully designed templates to choose from, you're sure to find one that's perfect for you and your needs. Once you've selected a template, you can then customize it completely from the overall layout to the website to all the fun little details such as the fonts and colors to create a website that is completely unique and perfect for you and your brand. So if you'd like to create a beautiful online presence of your own, then head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch your website, head to squarespace.com slash rosary apparel for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Next, take the two remaining larger rectangles and with right sides together, fold and press them in half. Then with a water erasable pen, draw a curved line from approximately 30 centimeters or 12 inches into the rectangle like this. Then stitch along this curved line. Do this for both sides. Once stitched, trim the excess fabric away. and turn the rectangle right side out. And your rectangle should now have two curved edges like this. Next, with your stitch length of your sewing machine changed to the longest possible setting, sew two rows of gathering stitches along the raw edges of your rectangles. Then gently pull on the top two threads to gather up the rectangles until they're approximately the same size as the armhole edges of your blouse. Once gathered up, the rectangles will curve slightly like this. Next, take your two sleeve pieces and sew two rows of gathering stitches in between the notches like this. And again, gently pull on the top two threads to gather up the fabric until it's approximately the same size as the armhole edge. Place the now ruffled rectangle along the armhole edge with the raw edges matching. 
Then with right sides together, place the sleeve on top, again matching the raw curved edge together. Pin and stitch all of the layers together, sandwiching the ruffled rectangle in place. Then overlock or zigzag stitch the raw edges. The layers were pretty thick for this bit, but I decided to risk it and have a try with my overlocker and it seemed to work fine. I then top stitched the sleeve edge to secure the ruffle in place and to keep it in position nicely. And your blouse should be coming together very nicely like this. Next, with right sides together, flip the bodice backs onto the bodice front and stitch them together along the underarm and side edges like this. Then hem the raw edges of the sleeves by folding and pressing in by about one centimetre or half an inch twice. Then stitch the hems in place. Next, to add a bit of puffiness to the sleeves, we're going to sew a couple rows of sharing elastic into the bottom edges of the sleeves. I've shared a whole video on how to share fabric and how to set up your sewing machine for sharing. And I'll leave that video linked below if you'd like to go check it out. But once your machine is set up, so two rows of sharing approximately five centimeters or two inches from the bottom edge of the sleeve. And you should now have some adorable ruffled puffy sleeves like this. Next, overlock or zigzag stitch along the raw centre back edges. Then take the two smaller rectangles we cut out earlier and fold and press one of the shorter ends in by about one centimetre or half an inch. Then with wrong sides together, fold and press the rectangle in half, unfold it, and then fold and press the edges into the center, and fold and press in half once more. Stitch along the folded edge, and these will be some cute ties for the back of the blouse. Simply place the raw end of the tie along the neck edge of the center back, and then with right sides together, flip the facing onto it and stitch it into position like this. Once stitched in place, flip the facing back onto the inside of the blouse. And you should now have a cute little tie nicely secured into the back of the blouse. Simply repeat this for the other side. Next, fold and press the back center edge in by about one centimeter or half an inch. Then with right sides together, pin and stitch the center back edges together, leaving a five centimeter or two inch opening at the top. Then top stitch along the neck edge to keep the ruffled collar, also known as a pie crust collar, nicely in place and standing up straight. Then simply tie up the ties into a bow and you should now have a cute little keyhole detail at the back of the blouse like this. This helps to open up the neck edge slightly to be able to fit your head into the blouse. Then to finish off the blouse, simply hem the entire bottom edge. Then remove any exposed gathering stitches from the ruffles. And your adorable ruffled sleeve and collared blouse is complete. So, how does it look?
So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you're now inspired to have a go at making a beautiful ruffled blouse like this one. I have shared so many different pattern hacking videos like this on my channel already and I'll leave the entire playlist down in the description below if you'd like to go and check those out. And if you did enjoy this video, I would love it if you could give it a like and subscribe to this channel for more sewing tutorials like this one. Have a lovely day and thanks for watching.